the book of Jonah chapter 1 unbelieved by scholars Baptists pastors Christians educators but the riches that the book of Jonah has and who cares what they say verse 10 then were the men exceedingly afraid and said to him, why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, that's Jehovah, because he had told them. Then they said unto him, what shall we do unto thee? If you don't recognize that. And he came into the prison cell trembling. What shall I do to be saved? You didn't see that? Did you miss that? The whale of the story? That you don't believe? What shall we do unto thee that the sea may be common? They're saying, well, what must we do to be saved? Notice, all this time, that the storm is still present. Because it says, for the sea wrought, that means doing. And was tempest others. I can't say it. The, the, the mariners, the, sea, the seamen, the sailors are scared out of their wits. And they find out it is this one man's fault that he's hiding from God, running from God. Okay, so what must we do to be saved? And he said to take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. So, alright, we're not on, on this side of Calvary in the book of Jonah. Okay? Jonah's not going to tell them to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. They're not Christians. Though one pastor believes they are. Down south of, of where we are in Daytona Beach. An anchor that's found underwater with no rope or chain tied to it. So the answer is, chuck me overboard. Jonah's like, and this will be the first of two times. Jonah's like, all right, I want suicide. But you do it. Because I'm not going where God wants me to do. I am not going to obey God. So the best thing to do is throw me in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, which Jonah would believe he would die from drowning eventually. That's what he believed. He doesn't believe if, if they chuck him in the water... There will be any salvation for him. He's not even sure if the storm will go away, but that's what he said. Now, Paul, I believe, as Silas, told the, the Philippian jailer, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And he believed. And his house believed. Then they were baptized. Now, I told you yesterday that Jonah pictured that sleeping Christian. Now, the men, as in the book of Acts, the question is, what must we do to be saved? And Jonah tells them, to the present time, you've got to rightly divide the Bible, and the present time right now is, you got to get rid of me. That's the answer. And when we go on the streets... Today, as Christians, we're to tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Read Jonah 2. 1, 2, 3. Read them. And 4. Nowhere does Jonah say, go to temple. As Christians are told today, go to Come to church. You come to my church. You come to my church. Invite them to church. 
Find the Sunday church. Find the Easter. This is one to two years. Find them the Christmas. This is one of the last two times of the year people. Find them the church. Jonah doesn't say come to temple. That ain't going to do them no good. They can't even get out of the Mediterranean Sea. Paul and Silas' answer is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They ain't tell them to go to church. And the answer for Jonah is you got to get rid of me. I'm the trouble. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to land, but they could not. For the sea wrought, worked, and was tempted that hard work against them. You know, you will tell people the gospel. You will tell them Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You will tell them to repent. You will tell them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You will tell them the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you from all sin. You will tell them. And you know, they'll, they'll walk away and they'll still go to religion. They'll still try to be good. They still believe whatever they believe when they came talking to you. That's life. That man that went out and sold the seed, the very first seed, the devil came and took the word. I've seen that. And then he had two seeds. It could have produced a plant, but there was no fruit. There were cares, troubles of the world. There was tribulation because of the Bible. And it, it produced nothing. And then there was one that was fruitful and brought forth fruit. Jonah has planted a seed that, hey, you want to be saved? Rightly divine the Bible. Right now in Jonah's time. If you want to be saved, you throw me overboard. You know, they built the ark in America. Though there's nowhere in the scriptures for the church or any Christian to build an ark. Well, why don't you go running around and say, throw me in the water, throw me in the water, throw me in the water. Actually, you know what? There is religions that will say water, water, immersion, sprinkle, half dip, full dip, water gun, fire hydrant. But it won't be the semen that get baptized. It would have been Jonah. And when Jonah gives the salvation of Jonah and the men of the ship, they go about working with works. Oh, we, we can take care of it ourselves. And they kept working. They kept working. The storm didn't stop. And the trial. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord. And said we beseech you. And that is a prayer of. That's a loved one in a hospital. That's getting bad news from the doctor. That's your spouse saying, you know what, I've had enough of you, I'm gone. That's a wayward child. That's your finances are in the tube, done. You ain't got no money. You're in trouble. There is nothing that nobody can do but God. I beseech thee. We've already tried the work. Pilate said, if I just washed my hands and woke up in hell. Pharaoh said, well, if you don't go so far away, well, if you leave your animals, well, if you leave your children with us,
I think was it what Felix said, I almost persuaded me to be a Christian. The rich young ruler I just got too many riches. Let me go bury my father first. Let me say goodbye to my home. There are a lot of people you will tell them, and Jesus told them, and Paul and Peter and James and John told them. And they will continue to go about it. Listen, soul winning is not 100%. They are all not going to heaven. Many will go the broad way to destruction. And few will go through the straight gate. But you'll get some, they'll go back to what they were doing. They'll go back to their church. They'll go back to religion. Then they get to the point, God, you know what that Philippian jailer's trouble was, why he was afraid? Unlike America. If Paul and Silas and the, and the prisoners had escaped, like he thought, the Roman law, I am told, is he would have died. Because he was going to kill himself. He would have died. And I've also heard that even his family. They don't, you know, people escape out of the jail today. Oh, oh, well. That man was going to commit suicide like Jonah wanted. Just throw me overboard. And they worked. And they worked. And they worked. And they get to the point, oh, we beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. Let us not perish for this man's life. Okay, we have left the storm. If we throw this man overboard like he says, he's going to die. We don't want to be charged with homicide. We don't want to be charged with murder. Jonah put them in a predicament. Why did Jonah just jump over himself? Say, you know, the only way you're going to get rid of the storm is if you get rid of me, put his hand up to his nose and say, okay, bye. And do a lovely swan dive or belly flop. Into Why didn't he do it? Now the men are more worried about murder than they are the storm. Because they're even saying, if we throw Jonah overboard, a Hebrew, a man of God, who is running from the presence of the Lord, he's going to die in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. We don't want that on our conscience. We don't want God to charge us. Lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, has done as it pleased him. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth in the sea. That's what he said to do. The Philippian judge, and Paul said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's what he said to do. They did it. Philip said to the Ethiopian eunuch, if you have a King James Bible, not the modern Bibles, what hinders me to be baptized? He says, you must believe on me. He goes, I believe Jesus is the Lord. Show me where Jonah said, come to go to temple. No, the message came out of his lips. And it was a great message. Drown me. They could not survive unless the death of Jonah. Did you just hear what I just said? The seamen could not survive unless the death of Jonah. Lay not this innocent blood. Do you know what Judas said to the priest? D innocent blood. Why? 
Let me look it up real, real quick. I want you to see this. Look at Matthew 27 4. Look at Judas saying, I have sinned. In that, I, jo Jonah said, I have sinned. I have ran from God. And that ye betrayed the innocent blood. All right. Well, look what the semen said. Lay not us this innocent blood. So even before the, the fish story, Jonah is a type of Jesus where the only way these semen are going to survive if Jonah dies. Because this is important because we are going to see Jonah die in chapter 2. Which the scholars, the teachers, the Sunday school teachers, the pastors, the Christians, the idiots. Or to offend Facebook, the stupid idiots who do not believe the Bible. Jonah is going to be typed as Joseph Jesus Christ in chapter 2. But in chapter 1, he's a type of Jesus. The only way you're going to survive, he's saying, throw me overboard. Okay, forget about throwing me overboard, unless I die. And they acknowledge it. Let us not perish for this man's life. Pilate said, I am innocent of this blood. Judas said, I have sinned and betrayed the innocent blood. Notice the words, innocent blood. I can only imagine. Let me come over here. And we look up. Say Jonah one fourteen. Jonah one fourteen. I'm sorry, you can't see this on Facebook. All right. ASB. Got innocent blood. Amplified innocent blood. Oh, so far, so good. Innocent blood. It, 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 Contemporary English version, which is used in my church, innocent man. Innocent blood. Well, they're pretty good. They, they all got pretty much the innocent blood. I'm surprised. NIV, another Bible that's in my church, innocent man. Not, you just ruined the cross reference. That's why you don't believe. Okay? I'm wondering, I'm, we're not going to look, I'm wondering what they say about what Judas said. Somewhere you know the cross reference will be ruined because they don't believe it. And what they're saying about the storm is, God, this is your pleasure. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't there somewhere written in the Bible that said that it pleased the Lord that he was bruised and beaten? Watch the words. Don't mess with the words. The words match the Lord Jesus Christ. Jonah has to die for these men because he, he's not going to swim back anywhere. <laughs> because we don't know how far they are. They said they bring it to land. We don't know how far that is. 
but it's deep enough where a whale shows up. So at the death of Jonah, these men will live. At the death of Jesus, life. And if Jesus died and was buried and arose again the gospel, Jonah, who Jesus said will be a type of the gospel, we'll all look at that later, he has to die, he has to be buried, and he has to be resurrected to be the type of Christ. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth and said, now they're obeying not Jonah, but they're obeying God. What they believe God is telling this prophet that is running from God. They're obeying the scripture. John, I mean, Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And the jailer believed. And the sea ceased. Say that four times. From her raging. Jonah and Jesus. There's a storm. Two men are asleep. And the end result of that storm is peace. And the disciples are like, their mouth is open, swallowing salt water like, what just happened? And there may be a couple of disciples with a tin can. But well, where did the water go? Where's the waves? The storm stopped. Both men. And they were asleep. And there is salvation. These sailors were saved. Now did they go to heaven? Then the men feared the Lord the beginning. The fear of the Lord the beginning of wisdom. <laughs> they left presiding. They left Hydros and Cato and Neptune. They didn't answer. Like Elijah challenged the 400 prophets of Baal. Baal didn't answer. But God, Jehovah, answered the fire, came down, licked up the water and the rocks. Jehovah, the Lord, answered. So I guarantee as soon as Jonah hit that water, instant. I, I, I can only, and when Jesus said peace, I don't even think still got out. And the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord. Whatever they had left that they didn't throw overboard, they gave to God. They didn't go to the temple, did it? They didn't went to the temple Baptist altar. They didn't walk in aisles. They looked over and said, I, I, I'm just saying, I, 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 oh, there's some wheat left over. Lord, here's some wheat. I don't know, whatever the sacrifice, I don't know if they burned it, or whatever they did, but they gave it to God. It wouldn't have been a tenth percent. <laughs> they didn't measure it all out. They grabbed what they had what they wanted to offer to God and say, God, here, with no measurement, 
They gave because they wanted to give, like Paul told the Corinthian church. They gave from their heart, not, not, not a tithe. Because these are Gentiles. And made vows. Lord, you get us back to port and whatever, fill in the blank. Whatever they had. Now do you see the story of Jonah that there needed to be a death for a salvation? Now whether they went to heaven or they went to, I don't know. God knows their heart. And I hope, listen to me, I hope if any of these sailors, I believe some will be in heaven. I believe some of them gave to the Lord Jehovah what they had for, for God's salvation. That the books we open say, hey, this book says they gave whatever they had on that ship. And they gave it willingly, Lord. Come on in. I hope those sailors go up to those scholars. I hope those sailors go up to the preachers. I <coughs> hope those sailors go up to the Sunday school teachers. I hope those sailors go up to the, to the Christians and smack them across the face and say, Jonah's real. That's a wide awakening. Now, style, you can hand them a King James Bible with a big old red slap across their face. How are you going to explain? I don't know if these men are saved or not that don't believe Jonah. How are you going to explain when we're in the eternal life, we are walking the street, not streets, a goal, and we're not going to see the lion and the bear or whatever lying together. They're gone. How are you going to explain walking down the street? You imagine a, a, if he's saved, a saved scholar. Walk out, he didn't believe it. He meant, oh, hi, Jonah. How you doing? <laughs> and Jonah turned around and gave him that smirk like, thought that wasn't real. There is a story that matches Jesus of men in a ship in a storm. And miraculously, the storm You don't see Jesus? You don't see the book of Acts? Jonah is dealing with who? Answer my question. Gentile. Are you ready? A drum roll, please. That's a terrible drum roll. Who was Peter, James, and John? And Paul? Were they not Hebrews? All right, all right, all right, all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go back to... Go back to verse 9. I am a Hebrew. What was Peter, James, and John, and Paul? They were Hebrew, right? What were these seamen? They were Gentiles. Who did Peter, James, and John, and Paul deal with in the book of Acts? The Philippian jailer, what was he? He was a Gentile. What was the, the Ethiopian, Ethiopian eunuch? He was a Gentile. What was Cornelius, the Italian band guy? He was a Gentile. You don't see Jesus Christ working now, going out to the Gentiles, going to the church. And we haven't even got to the to the, the greatest part of the cupcake, the frosting. You see, when you get a cupcake with no frosting, it's a muffin. It's a healthy muffin. And you want to make it nice and gooey and all that, you put that frosting on top. The frosting is going to come in the later night. I hope you see more in the book of Jonah by what me explaining it to you than your typical Baptist Sunday school teacher is going to teach. Or your typical pastor will teach. If he even teaches what we're going to do. I said, I have been in a church of a well-known American preacher 
also well known worldwide. Many of you, if I were to say his name, you would know the, the name of this man. You would probably have high regard for this man. While one of his students at his Bible school got up at the pulpit with, with, with my children there, with my wife before, before she died, and he taught completely opposite of Jonah, what I'm going to teach you. I don't know how far you must not believe Jonah. Because you're going to get to the next few nights, you're going to get to the point, if you don't believe Jonah, you don't believe the gospel. Then you're on shaky ground. The men, as far as we can read what the scriptures say, they left alive, they feared to God, they offered a sacrifice, and they made vows to Jehovah. They weren't praying to the gods. One more thing before we leave Jonah in the water. This is like Paul. He's about, he gives license and then we leave him off for another night in the book of Acts. We talk about the city of Nineveh getting saved, right? Before that city got saved, here is a bunch of seamen on a ship that got saved. What was the message? Throw me overboard and the storm went away. What was his message? Go to temple? Look at verse 9. I'm a Hebrew. They knew who the Hebrews were. They knew who the Jewish people were. They've heard the stories of David and Goliath and Solomon and the temple. I fear the Lord Jehovah, which shows up later, the God of heaven, which made the sea and the dry land. Jonah teaches and preaches the Creator God. It made the men exceedingly fear. Look at verse 10. That this God in power, that here is his prophet, if he disobeys his prophet, I mean, if the prophet disobeys the God, here comes this big storm. And when we do what the prophet says to do, the storm is gone. Poseidon can do nothing. When the fire came down for Elijah from heaven and licked up the sacrifice in the water, then they started saying, God, he's the Lord. God, he's the Lord. And believe. That's what's happening here. It was a miracle for that Philippian Joe that all the doors opened in those prisoners' face. That was a miracle. Even for a Gentile. So we have a death of Christ and people getting saved. We have Hebrews going around teaching the, teaching the Gentiles. We got the book of Acts. We got a bunch of men saying, what must we do to be saved? Acts 16.30. And we'll stop right there.